Hey, what's up, you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of Shameless on Showtime, the week we see in Season 7, Episode 2, which is called Swipe, Fuck, Leave. Um, and I want to apologize for this uh, review getting out late. Uh, you know, the episode aired last night, but, you know, aired back to back with a strain on FX, and, you know, Strain's a show I've been uh, reviewing since Season 1, so I had to, you know, do that video, and then. I wanted more time in my night for, uh, you know, watching other stuff, um, so I decided to record this review, you know, this morning or this afternoon when I got up, and, uh, yeah, so it, it was just a little bit jarring, you know, uh, almost going from reviewing The Strain to, uh, you know, Shameless, you know, you know, kind of different shows, and I'm not sure which, uh, world is, uh, worse to live in, uh, you know, probably The Strain, but, you know, still. Um, but yeah, this is a, you know, another pretty good episode. Um, you know, Shameless, uh, it always has something going on. It's, I say this every video I do on it, it's one of the best shows out there, you know, it's that, when it comes to acting, just the, you know, chaotic feel of every little story going on, I just love it. And, uh, this one I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, I don't know if I, uh, liked it quite as much as the premiere, but... You know, definitely kept certain uh, plots going that were, uh, you know, put out there in the premiere, and then you know, added a couple other little things come up. Um, so yeah, uh, Fiona, of course, with uh, you know Frank, he ended up uh, you know nailing, literally nailing himself in to Fiona's room, and uh, Fiona just basically ends up uh, breaking the door to get into it, and then we find out that Frank is also uh, disinheriting kids. You know, or uh, disinheriting the you know the rest of the Gallagher's because you know you know they've just had such a bad relationship for however long now, and he doesn't think any of them now deserve to have the Gallagher name. Darn, <laughs> and uh, that doesn't bother any of them. You know, they're all pretty much awesome. <laughs> um, now you know Fiona can just go by like uh, you know Fiona, like Cher, <laughs> right? Um, and then he takes Liam under his wing, to, mainly just because Liam is, you know, still really young, so he's easily the easiest to uh, just have him tag along and manipulate and stuff like that. I'm hoping Liam grows up to be a little bit better than uh, some of the rest of the siblings, though. Like, he goes down, like, a better path, like, right away, or he rises above a lot of stuff. I don't know. Um, I'm not sure how, uh, how old we'll see Liam in the series, but... Then of course we had uh, Ian confronting Caleb, you know, after seeing him, uh, you know, making out with this girl, you know, after thinking he was gay, you know, essentially cheating on Ian, and uh, apparently Caleb doesn't think, uh, you know, having sex with a girl is cheating when uh, you're supposedly gay or in a relationship with a guy, and he thinks he he just has this right to, uh, you know, fuck her whenever he wants just because they knew her you know, he knew her from, uh, childhood and stuff like that, you know, it's something he's always done, apparently, so, <laughs> and he basically he just doesn't consider it cheating unless it's with another guy, and of course he's uh, definitely wrong with this, and, but then he also apparently says that no one's 100% gay, and I know a lot of people are kind of irritated with this, uh, storyline just because, uh, like, you know, they don't want to see, supposedly see, like, the writer's uh, you know, like, force Ian to, you know, suddenly become, like, bisexual or straight or something like that. I don't think they're ever going to do that. <laughs> and with, uh, what Ian, how Ian ends up reacting to something he tries in this episode, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, of course, uh, Carl is being teased. You know, I just want Liam, to, uh, I just want Caleb to get his ass kicked by Mickey when he gets out of prison. <laughs> uh, we really need Mandy and, uh, Mickey back on the show, and, uh, yeah, so, anyway. We talked about that enough before. Uh, Carl's also being teased for, uh, you know, getting himself circumcised, you know, for Dominique. Uh, you know, hoping to get a blowjob. And then he's uh, struggling, of course, because he uh, can't get an erection or else it's going to mess with, uh, you know, the work they did down there. Um, and he literally thinks about sex, like, every, uh, you know, two seconds. And so he has to keep on going back to the doctor throughout the episode. And then Fiona... Uh, you know, we basically get this idea, or it's it's obvious, you know, Fiona's been holding back and talking about what actually happened at the wedding at the end of season six, you know, how she's feeling um, after uh, Sean left and stuff like that. And, you know, she goes down to uh, 
you know, the office, and she doesn't want to be the manager at Patsy's Pies anymore because it's just a ton of pressure. Everyone hates her automatically that's working there. She wants to go back to being a, wait a waitress, you know. That's uh, where a lot more of the money comes from, and she doesn't have to be uh, looked at that way. But it's basically found out that if another manager quits her, just going to close the restaurant. You know, it's not worth the hassle from their end of things. So Fiona does stay on as manager. I'm still hoping for Sean to come back. Come on. I, I think they left that. We need Sean back. We can't just be, you know, we can't just have another new love interest for some reason. You know, we either need uh, Jimmy to come back. Um, to, you know, like I said, I made my piece with uh, how he left the show, though. I think that is very in character with how they worked that you know, uh, in the later part of season five. But I think uh, the relationship with Sean could easily, or not easily, but it could be repaired. I think there's still more left between them. So I do hope Sean does come back at some point. I think I just think the actor did a really good job, too. He became a character I actually invested in. Um, you know, I've heard rumors that he might show off this season, but we'll see. And it would make sense if Fiona still does have some unresolved uh, feelings about what happened there. Uh, Ian and Lip, of course, they're hanging out. Of course, I love all the Ian and Lip stuff. You know, they just have such a great uh, brother relationship. You know, very little judgment. Uh, of course, they're you know they're humor with each other. They completely understand each other all the time. It's it's really cool. Um, but I guess Ian, you know, uh, Caleb got into his head and he's thinking about that. He should experiment with another chick, or experiment with a girl. And uh, then he asks uh, Lip if he ever uh, experimented with a guy at some point. You know, Lip hasn't. He hasn't really thought about it. Ian asks him if uh, if he thinks a girl's going down on him at a party, but turns out to be a guy. What would he do? You know, Lip asks, uh, "How far along is he?" <laughs> um, you know, so I guess Lip is like ninety three percent straight. Uh, but yeah. And then, of course, uh, Frank he uh, manipulates these apparently illegal immigrants to uh, work on a certain project, and this, of course, is uh, helping with uh, you know keeping the rest of the family from the second floor. And once he uh, pays them for, it, he tries you know lowballing them. He's trying to teach Liam different tactics on how to you know survive in this world, and. He really promised them all a hundred bucks, but he wanted he tried to again just take like fifty or seventy five, and they promised to you know kill both him and the brown boy in their in their sleep. So Frank, of course, gave him the hundred, and uh, you know Fiona, she's actually hiring new people, and of course this makes sense because you know quite a few of the women were giving her hassle, especially Olga. And uh, she's able to fire Olga despite her arguing that she could sue, you know, for being, you know, being fired as the only black woman there. But luckily, she uh, hires a younger uh, black girl on the spot, so she doesn't have to deal with that. And I think it's good, you know. I like that Fiona's you know, having, a, you know, is able to get a grip on uh, some of this anyway when it comes to managing. And of course, uh, it is kind of annoying when girls like uh, Olga and I think her name is a. Uh, I forget what the other girl's name is, you know, the heavier set uh, white woman who's been there for a while. It's just kind of annoying to give Fiona shit just because she's the manager in a position where she has to, you know, make sure certain things are done a certain way. And yeah, Olga, you know, Olga, they did try to mess with the schedule behind Fiona's back without really uh, asking her about it. But yeah, I don't really need to get too deep into that. Um. And of course, Carl is back to the doctors again after you know injuring himself uh, from getting a boner. And then you know, doctor's advice is just imagine hairy balls, hairy balls. And so Carl actually does. You know, he's on the train, he's seeing these uh, women, and then he imagines like their chest area. You know, we literally see like a like a uh, graphic of a ball sack appearing on the screen. And then you see a woman's ass. It turns out to be a ball sack, or he's he's looking under a woman's skirt. He's a ball sack. Um, so, you know, that was fun. <laughs> um, Ian actually does try having sex with this girl. And apparently he was able to fuck her, so he must have been hard to some extent, right? Um, but he uh, went down on her, and then he really doesn't like the taste, apparently. Um, yeah, I don't really want to go into the way he described it, but it, it was funny and semi-accurate in a way, depending on what girl, you know, I don't want to talk about that right now. <laughs> um, but, you know, like Lip says, he might have just uh, picked the wrong girl, you know, who doesn't really take care of herself down there. Um, you know, Ian was basically traumatized, and I think that's fairly uh, 
that was a good choice, you know, not to have Ian all of a sudden, like, turn around and, like, women or something like that. Um, the only woman I could actually buy Ian with is Mandy. Uh, you know, I, of course, I still, you know, go for, uh, Lip and Mandy's connection, but I know Ian and Mandy are really close to us, so that's the only woman I could really buy him somehow having feelings for. But I'm glad they didn't just do it with, like, this random girl. Or because of this random girl. And then, uh, throughout the episode that, um, you know, Kev, you know, has, uh, of course, uh, Veronica and Svetlana on his back about, you know, not taking care of the house when he's taking care of the kids. And, you know, when he's taking care of the kids, he has to play around with them a lot. So, of course, the house gets dirty. It's very counterproductive on that end. And he sees this uh, maid service, you know, it's a topless maid service, and he thinks the maid would actually clean the house, but it turns out to basically just be like an escort, you know, hookup setup, really. Um, but then he gets this business idea, you know, he calls it uh, Nooks and Fannies, and, you know, they can go around, and uh, he gets this old woman involved, uh, she can actually clean while the others, you know, do whatever to the client. <laughs> um... There's also some stuff with uh, Deb going on in this episode, too. Of course, she's continuing to steal uh, strollers and selling them online on Craigslist. And she almost gets caught. You know, I think she should have gotten caught before now, but she almost gets uh, seen, and she has to sort of abandon uh, taking one of them. Um, you know, this story's okay, you know. Uh, I, I, I just think Deb's... I think I think Deb has become, like, a unnecessarily frustrating character. She didn't have to go down this path as a person, I don't think, but... She, she's just been made into even more of the stereotype than the rest of them, really. <laughs> um, you know, so I don't really care about Deb, to be honest. The actress, uh, you know, uh, Kenny is fine, but, you know, I just don't really uh, like the path they've taken with Deb as a character for the past couple of seasons. Um, of course, Fiona, you know, she's invited to go out clubbing with some of the newer girls she's hired, and... Of course, she talks about how she's more of going into relationship person. She doesn't really just do, like, hookups. Um, but this girl persuades her, and, you know, she takes a picture of her and has her join Tinder. You know, one of those uh, online dating sites. And Fiona kind of gets addicted to it, in a way, because the guy hits her up pretty quickly. They hook up, and, you know, sort of releases some uh, stress in her, I'm guessing. Um, but Veronica, of course, she, she sees that when Fiona... Yeah, shows up to her doorstep very late at night, you know, drunk. Um, that it's really just almost like a reaction of her ignoring, you know, some of uh, her, you know, sadness towards what happened at the wedding. Um, I really don't need Fiona hooking up with other guys right now, but, you know, it's a little bit annoying, but, you know, we're kind of used to characters making mistakes like this on Shameless. And, uh, well, of course, that's when we got the swipe, fuck, leave quote, you know? <laughs> um... That's essentially what the girl described it as, you know, swipe, you know, through the site on her phone, you know, fuck, and then it's done, you know, no strings attached. Um, of course, Fiona sleeps on the couch that night because, uh, Frank, he actually layered, he had the guys layer cinder blocks, you know, uh, through both entrances to the second floor. Um, you know, of course, Lip and Ian stayed down there as well. I was wondering why they didn't really act on this sooner, why wouldn't they just, like, try to break it down that night, or maybe they just, you know, they would deal with it in the morning, right? Um, you know, Lip takes a pickaxe, Fiona likes the sledgehammer, so she takes that, and, you know, Lip's having a little bit of trouble with it, but Fiona also has this, all this energy and rage and anger that she unleashes, and she just starts breaking down the cinder blocks with the sledgehammer, just, like, uh, you know, hit after hit, so that was pretty cool. And this episode stops there. But yeah, overall, really good episode, you know, I can never really complain about Shameless. Each episode is very enjoyable, even if they're not, like, the most emotional or anything like that. Um, you know, it's also... Shameless is also a pretty interesting show to review because, you know, it's partly, like, a black comedy type of thing, but it's also become more of a drama over the seasons, I think. Um, you know, so it's a little bit of a different one to review for me, but it's either way, it's one of the absolute best shows out there. It's described as a dramedy, and I always uh, put that in my description, so I think that's a fairly accurate way to, you know, describe it. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy talking about this show. It's easily one of my favorites out there. It just uh, sucks having to wait a week to watch e each episode now, whereas before I could watch, like, uh, you know, three or four at a time if I wanted to. But yeah, still really enjoy talking about it. I'm going to give this episode about an 8.5 out of 10. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.
Peace.